Okay, it's experiment time. Uh, if you guys have been watching any of the 7950X, 7900X, 7600X videos, and you would know by now, even all the way down to the 7600X, temperatures are uh, a bit up there. Like a lot of people have said, you know, 95C, even though AMD's saying that's the new normal, nobody likes to be right at the ragged edge of their temperature. So I wanna see what it takes today to actually tame that level of temperature. Because some of the comments I've seen is like, air cooling is dead. Uh, I don't wanna have water in my system, so I'm not gonna buy one, which is perfectly valid. A lot of people are not comfortable with having any liquids in their system, especially with the failure rates of AIOs or hit and miss. A lot of people are very afraid of open loop, which is, you know, full custom loop. So we're gonna test today, again, with our 360 AIO, what it takes to actually get this temperature under control. So this will be a bit vlog style, um, but we're gonna kind of start off with like a small, medium, and large sort of approach. One of the first things people did with AMD CPUs, which worked really well with older Ryzen platforms and, and architectures, was undervolting. But I have a theory that we're not gonna really be able to successfully undervolt this particular CPU um, and platform because of the fact that the core clocks that it's pushing are calling for a lot of voltage. So the first thing I wanna see right now is we use Cinebench, and we're just using Cinebench to dump heat into our system because it's actually quite hot given the fact that it is the, the way the, the instruction set works on this. Um, but we are going to be running this just looping just to kind of keep it going. I care a little bit less about the score, although fun, fun fact, Right now, again, out of the box, no custom settings or anything. It doesn't even have AMD Expo enabled at the moment. Um, 38.121, was it? Which is actually like 70 points higher than our best that we got while benchmarking. And again, no tweaking whatsoever. If we take a look at temperatures here, here's our package temp. We don't have core temp visible on here yet. I should download Ryzen Master just to see if it'll show up. But look at this. It will continue to climb. And one of the reasons for that is this is actually AMD tuning. It climbs not because the temperature itself is getting hotter, the CPU is dynamically kind of adjusting things to get to 95. So think of it as like if it were an a, 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 a GPU and you put your temperature target on there and let's say theoretically you had no power limit, you know, you had no um, core limit, it could just keep going, it would go all the way to that temp because that's what it's designed to do. Now that's what AMD is saying is happening here. So we're back up to 93.4, 93.5. Interestingly enough, we're not pegging 95 instantly, which is what was happening in the past. The core clocks are kind of interesting too. 5.1 is the all core, but some overshoot and go higher and some don't quite make it. But what that does is that gives us an average. Wow, do you see how in between the tests it shoots up to like 5.354 all core? Because again, load determines how high the frequency can go too. But some don't quite make it and some definitely overshoot it. So at the end of the day, your average clock speed ends up being the 5.1. So the way that that works is it actually identifies the better cores on the CCXs and it pushes those a little harder. And the other ones that don't quite identify as, uh, I guess I should say the, like the ASIC quality on them is not quite as good, then they'll undershoot a little bit. So if you draw a median line between all those, those frequencies, you get the 5.1. Almost at the 95. That's hot though. That's hot. They're saying it is by design. You can see we are pulling 215 watts. A lot of people are worried about this. We have a Threadripper systems here. And I come from the old X299, X99, X78 platform in Intel. I'm used to high wattages. As long as the board's power delivery system is capable of supplying that type of voltage and wattage on a regular basis, like it's got a decent enough built VRM and cooling solution and you give proper cooling in your case, I'm not worried about the watts. But the power bill, yeah, well, if you're gaming, your graphics card is what's responsible for your power bill, not your CPU, because the CPU will not be pulling that kind of wattage under gaming. It'll be pulling like 80 watts. So. Your, your graphics card, I almost said your graphics card. GIF or GIF, fight. Like we're not losing any score, even as it gets up to that 95 number. I, I mean, it's fluctuating like 50 points each run, but that's normal for this particular test. But what we wanna see now, what are the voltages it's running at? Vcore's at 1.280. But look at, this, look at the spread on the VIN. 1 1.864, 1 1.7, 1.65, 1 1.65, 1.06. 0 0.760, like I don't know how accurate these are. So I think one of the things I'm realistically gonna have to do right now is download Ryzen Master, that way I can see maybe a little bit more accurately. But one of the ways that you can tell is that that, that temperature is not cooling system related, because if it were, let's say the cooling system were fully saturated with that kind of heat, when I stopped the test, it would take a long time to come back down, because it's taking that long for the cooler to dissipate the heat that it's absorbed. So if I now hit stop, Keep your attention right here on the 94.5. Let's see how fast it comes back down. 92, 88, 85. 
77, 74, 72, 69, 67, 64, 60, 60, 50. And we see it usually idle right around 40, 45. Look at that. So there, there's a little bit of the proof in the pudding that it's not as cooler dependent as that is heat that is just, I don't know how to explain it. It's really just the way that the temperature is, is being reported. It's, it's like that hot spot versus uh, like the thermal junction temperature versus the like cold spot on the GPUs. There's multiple points where it takes temps. It, it's very similar to how this works with the CPU. Like if I hit start again right now, I'm gonna go right back up to the 90s, check it out. Again, by design, like I feel like it would take some pretty extreme cooling to really start to see it come down like, you know, any sort of a noticeable curve. Before we get to the undervolting, I mentioned in my review about how freakily, like freakishly fast the system is, like the responsiveness of it. Check this out, I'm gonna open the browser. Oops, oops, there we go. Watch how fast tabs open. AMD Ryzen Master, so let's install it in real time. <laughs> See how fast this stupid thing is? Is it, oh, there it goes. Okay, uh, scroll down and agree. <clears throat> Doing this all in real time, because I want you guys just to see how insanely fast this goes. Done. It's, it's, it's freaky. Like, okay, shut down, you ready? Boom, boom, shut down. <laughs> yes. For when mom comes in real quickly and you're like, ah, I'll turn homework. And fun fact, AMD Expo was not even enabled right there. That was just out of the box, 4,800 megahertz, loose timings. Okay, so I locked the all core right now to 5.2, as you can see right here. That's, that is a 100 megahertz overclock. It is not gonna be doing a single boot, a single core overclock to like the 5.7 because I, it's all locked at 5.2. I haven't gone in and done the per core type of deal yet. I just wanted to like, let's just lock it across the board because that's the highest power draw temperature situation. So that's kind of what I'm playing with here. But let's just run it right here. Sir, it, what, let's just see, will it run? Temperature's right here for package. Dude, look at this, 5.2 over, so that should be like 58,000 upper 58s. Or 38, 38,831. So that's already 800 to 900 points gain. So you know what we need to do? We need to restart. Actually, what we need to do is download freaking Ryzen Master for the right one, but I am an old school BIOS level overclocker, so that's where I'm gonna be playing with it. One thing you could take away from this is yes, even though this is overclocking right now, we haven't gotten to the trying to mess with the cooler yet. If we can overclock it on the stock voltage, that means we can undervolt it on the stock clocks. That's kind of the way I look at it. So let's just see if this will even run without crashing. 39,636. Dude, each 100 megahertz is like a big score jump. Look at this, 5.4 all, not throttling, 88, 89. It's hitting the same temps. No matter what I do, it's hitting the same temps. 40,288. I tried to go straight to 5.6. No? Did it actually go? It looped. It might have reset itself. So this might be a golden sample. I don't think this is gonna be like across the board. It can't possibly do this without crashing or melting. There it goes. Immediately. <laughs> there. We'll just see if 5.5 five goes and then we'll move on. This is just fun. This is why I'm so excited. Just whether or not people buy it or not, the fact that I get to just play with it and see what the new stuff looks like, what's the future of CPUs look like. You know, it's so, this is, this is, this is why my channel exists. I love this sort of stuff. As I start the test, I'm well aware that I said I was gonna undervolt and so far all I've done is overclock, but this tells me, yeah, there's a crash right there. Okay, so 5.4 all core at the stock voltage is kind of like, and that's a lockup. I have to kind of know what sort of headroom we have before I can figure out what kind of undervolting we can do, if that makes sense. So now that I know that 5.4 all core is where we're able to go on the stock voltage at 1.25, and 5.5 at 1.25 is not good enough, I feel like I can leave it stock now, and I'm gonna try 1.20, and I wanna see what happens with that. But here's the crazy thing. I haven't had to clear a CMOS yet. It's still doing its thing. I don't know if you can see the Q code. I have yet to have to clear a CMOS. Now, previous Ryzen, any version of it, if you crash like this, a lot of the times, a clear CMOS is required, because every reboot subsequent of the crash just wouldn't post. But this is posting just fine. One other thing I really wanna point out, and I, this is not me like, really trying to convince you that the 95C is okay. 
I know it's a temperature we're not really kind of used to seeing, at least on AMD, but the fact that I was upping the clocks like I was and the temps were staying the same, that really shows you that that 95C is by design. So I think it's just gonna take some time. Yeah, that, that crash like completely made windows go, what? But yeah, I, I think it's one of those things where it's just gonna take some time to get used to it. And that's a hard sell though, because in, in, in PC enthusiasts, we want our systems to run as cool as possible because we always knew cool usually leads to stable, leads to more comfortable environment that you're in in terms of the space heating and then also longevity. That's a restart windows. The first time you do this. Okay, this is a bug in this particular version of Ryzen Master. Every time I hit apply, like to restart windows, it, it locks up the system. So we're just apparently not gonna be able to do the undervolting right now. Cause I can't figure out in this BIOS where to do it. This ASRock BIOS on the Tai Chi, not my favorite. I have a feeling there will be builds to come out for this BIOS later that will be less empty, the best way to put it. Um, it doesn't give you per core control or any of that sort of stuff. So I guess I'm just gonna leave it. And we're gonna go right into like the air conditioner to see what happens if we cool it down more because this is kind of the problem. Remember how I said in my video, like you should only adopt the newest thing if you're willing to adopt the, the bleeding edge bugs and kind of nuances that come with it. This is the least nuanced though of any Ryzen CPU I've ever experienced, which is why I'm still very, like none of this is making me feel like I won't go with it for my own system because realistically, I don't feel like I have to overclock this system. I just want to keep it cool. Um, fun fact though, the Intel keynote's kind of going on right now and they did announce uh, six gigahertz out of the box, single core on a CPU coming early next year. So that's gonna be like, what? There's three months left in this year. So at least three months before you see that, maybe four or five. The CPU battles are on and it's actually kind of glorious. So you know what we need to do? We need to pull that old trusty and get that plumbed up to my radiator. Ah, ha, ha, ha. ah I just flicked myself at the box. People don't understand that this is truly an art form. It takes a special kind of idiot to be good at cardboard crafting. And I am an idiot to grab the double walled cardboard for this. I'm sure this is what the AMD engineers had in mind with the uh, cooling solutions for 77 or 7,000 series. You know, check it out. It is my cooling tunnel of awesomeness. This side up. Este Lado Aribe. So don't look at the, no, don't look at this side. I ran, I just didn't want to cut another piece of cardboard. <laughs> I do have the air uh, blowing right towards the VRMs too, as you can see. So we got cooling on the memory, cooling on the VRMs, cooling on uh, the heat sinks for them, blowing right across the base of this, the motherboard. Some air is going under the motherboard. So this will help the whole situation in terms of power delivery, temperature, VRM cooling, as well as CPU. It's down to 66 degrees Fahrenheit. It's funny because we don't live in a cold climate where we can just open a window <laughs> and get stupid cold temperatures. But this definitely is bringing it down below ambient temperature now. So let's just see what happens with the temp. Because the way it should work with water cooling here is every C, to, now if your cooler is maximized, maxed out, every C you drop the temperature of the, the radiator or the, the cooler is a C of cooling, like a, a temperature drop for the CPU. So if the fluid temperature inside here was like 30 C and we could drop it down to 29 C, the temperature and the core temps of the CPU would also come down one C. That's if the cooler is being maxed, usually. But I just kinda wanna, I wanna see now, it's still dropping, I wanna see what kind of differences we're gonna see in temperatures here. Run multi-core, let's see what our temperatures and stuff are. 74, 77, 78, 80, 81, 80, 81, 81, 80. We've controlled it. But it's taking an air conditioner to get it to 80C. It also did on a 12900K, people. <laughs> Remember that video? <laughs> yeah, it's hitting 5.2, on the CC, CCD zero versus CCD one. Yeah, 38,062. That's actually pretty awesome right there. Man, this is one of those things where I would just love to like overclock the living crap out of it, but every time I try and do something, see, every time I say restart Windows, you wanna apply now, cancel. See, I can't. Now watch, it's gonna lock up. What if I do the curve optimizer? 
Let's see, all core curve optimizer. Start optimizing. Okay, there we go. Dude, this went 5-4 all core on the curve optimizer. Estimated time left, one hour, 22 minutes. Okay, I don't think I'm gonna wait. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could do this yourself, but it's sort of playing around with things based on temperatures. See, er there's something wrong with this build. Every time I say apply and let it shut down windows, like to sh it has to restart windows, it crashes. So I can't overclock through this build of Ryzen Master. It definitely has a problem. All right, so we're back to my manual limit to 5,500 per, uh, like, just, it won't, it won't go single core above 5,500, and that's what sucks about this particular BIOS right now on this motherboard, is it doesn't give us per core overclocking. It should, it really, really should, because obviously the factory logic can do it. But I wanna see now, will 5.5 run without changing anything? Because remember, it crashed last time. It's going, oh, there it goes. Yeah, so it's more of like a, more of an architectural limit there that we have to figure out what's causing it to crash. But as you can see, it gained 100 megahertz by dropping the temperature down to the low 80s from the 90s. And that's 100 megahertz above the 5.1 all core that was advertised. So there's, there is headroom and that logic is doing stuff. As you can see though, it just takes an air conditioner to do it. We do have LN2 pots that'll fit this. I know Steve's playing around with LN2. I kind of feel like doing it again, but I, I only have one X670 extreme board right now that I can play with, so I don't exactly want to go messing this one all up with Vaseline and stuff, but we got a lot of stuff that we can play with here. My recommendation though, if you're considering going with this, honestly, biggest cooler you can fit in your case. Best airflow you can possibly get, because as you can see, there is headroom to be had. Um, but if it hits the 95C, you're still getting the advertised price or price, of advertised speed, as long as it's not hitting 95C and then it wants to continue climbing because your cooling isn't good enough. But Ian Cutris, uh, who is an analyst and, a, and a, a engineer, has tested this with air and said like twin tower coolers and stuff have been just fine. So it really is gonna come down to also your environment. Is your room really hot? Because that's gonna affect it. But we are in the era of hot CPUs um, and you get 220 watts going to a CPU, it's gonna get it's gonna get toasty, especially since it's a smaller process, which means more focused heat. Anyway, there you go, guys. I hope you've learned something from this today. There is scaling to be had with temperature. The better the cooling, the better. Um, I know a lot of you might be afraid of putting water in your system without going, you know, don't wanna go AIO, then your rec my recommendation is big fat Noctua's or like Dark Rock Pros from Be Quiet, something massive, because you need the surface area. And load your case up with as much fans as possible and keep your room as cold as possible if you wanna get the maximum clocks out of it. So I think the next thing we need to do is potentially now see what the curve looks like as we start warming it up. We start using things like a space heater next to it or something to start really controlling the temps and seeing how high it'll go uh, before it'll start really slowing down. All right guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.